Hey what's up YouTubers, it's Dansky and in this tutorial we're going to be continuing on from yesterday where we started designing a weather screen user interface in Adobe Illustrator. So if you've not already watched part one, I'll have a link to this below in the description. This was where we laid out everything and got the basic elements onto our, onto our design or our app screen. Now we're going to look at adding the visual aesthetics, the design, the wow or style to complete our app screen. So to start with I'm going to paste in my background image that I'm going to use. I've already sourced this image and I'm just going to move that to one side for a second. Now I'm going to select this shape here, the whole background, so the size of the iPhone 6 that we're working with and I'm going to hold Alt and Shift to create a copy and then I'm going to go up to Object, Arrange and Bring to Front. Now I'm then going to select both the image and the iPhone 6 dimensions here together and go up to Object, down to Clipping Mask and Make. So now it crops my image. Now I can double click this and that will let me go in and I can adjust the crop like so until I'm happy. So something like this and then up here I can just click the back arrow to back out. Now I'm going to drag this into position. You see it snaps in position nicely. I'm going to go to Object, Arrange, Center Back, and then just select this top gray layer and hit Delete or Backspace. So now I can see this underneath. And I'm just going to select this, go up to Object, and Lock. So now as I'm actually working on the user interface design in a bit more detail, I can get an image, uh, I can get an idea for how all these different elements are going to look with an actual photograph behind. So I've locked this background image so I don't accidentally select it. So let's start working on the design a bit more. So to start with, I've got my umbrella shape here. Now it's always good practice if you are working on something like this to at times make copies of different icons. So for example, I'm going to just drag this umbrella icon out holding Shift and Alt. And I'm going to leave a copy of this shape over here on the right hand side. And this is going to still be editable. So I can go and adjust the stroke width if I wanted to at a later date. Because what I'm going to do with this version actually on the artboard is I'm going to go to Object down to Expand leave fill and stroke selected, click OK. So now the width of these lines is not easily editable anymore. So by doing this I've got this editable version always over here as a backup if I need it. So now I'm going to increase the size of this by selecting the shape and holding Alt and Shift to scale from the center. And You'll see here if I go into preview mode, that's Command Y on the Mac or Control Y on the PC. I've got all these sort of loose ends, if you like, of shapes just not all joined together. I want this to be one fluid shape. So let's select this, go over to the Pathfinder palette and then click on the top left one, which is Unite. And you'll see there it makes this all into one complete shape, nice and tidy. And I'm going to select this and in the Swatches palette I'm going to select White. Now I'm going to double click this and make this a global swatch because I will have a few other elements that are white as well. And when designing, if I do cho choose to change that white color to a different color or a gray or a blue or a pink, it will update every instance of that white color. So very handy there. So now I've got the text saying London up here and the temperature. And I've got the location icon. So I can select all of those holding shift and clicking on each one. You'll see at the moment the fill is black. And we're going to go and add these to white as well. So if I do double click this white swatch and I did want to make all of those black, for example, I can select the preview box and you'll see that as I adjust this swatch, every instance of white will be updated. So it's a very quick and easy way to adjust the color on multiple elements when you're trying lots of different designs to see what works. But for now I'm happy with this, 
I think you can probably do with standing out a bit more because if you were designing a weather app, or as we are, you may have lots of different images in the background. Some might be sky, some might be rain. Sky can be a lot lighter than a dark, rainy image. So to ensure that the lettering, the place and the temperature will always stand out, what you can do is select the rectangle tool. We will draw a rectangle that is the size of the iPhone 6 screen. So dragging from the top right to the bottom right, sorry, the top left to the bottom right corner. We're going to set the fill of this color to black. And using the shortcut keys here, we're gonna send this all the way to the back and then we're going to bring it forward one step. So then object, arrange, bring forward. So it's on top of our photograph layer. And then what we're going to do is in the transparency palette, we're gonna set this to 10%. Now you could set this to a higher percentage. We're trying to find a balance between making this lettering and the uh, the temperature and all the white elements stand out more whilst not dulling the image down in color too much You could do 50% for example Which makes it a lot easier to read but then the background is quite dull So usually somewhere around 10 20 maybe 30% is quite good Quite a good balance for allowing any kind of lighter text to stand out Whilst not dulling the background too much so that it loses its vibrancy I think for this example, I might go for 15, 15%. So what I can do now is select this. Remember, I'm selecting the transparency layer because the background is already locked. But what I'm going to do is lock this as well. So go up to object, down to lock and selection. Now it will lock any shapes that I've got selected. So now both those elements are locked and will not move, which is great. So now we've just got the last bit here, which is the days of the week. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, let's say it's a Friday. So I'm going to make Friday a different color. Let's just pick blue for now. And I'll have the text as white. Now I'm going to select with the direct selection tool, that's this one here, over just the boxes Hold shift and then just select over these other two as well and I'm going to knock the transparency down now I don't want to delete these boxes because when designing you might try lots of different things and if you delete them they're not there to then edit with and play with if you are, do decide to try another design so I'm just going to make them completely transparent for now and then I'm going to left click using the direct selection tool and holding shift I'm going to select these other days of the week and I'm going to make those white as well and then using the direct selection tool I'm going to select this rectangle now the reason I'm using the direct selection tool a lot is because if I use the main selection tool it will select this all as one group now I could go in and ungroup this but it's much easier for me to leave this all grouped together and just use the direct selection tool to select certain elements and then edit them individually. So if you're on a CC version of Illustrator you'll see here with this shape selected I've got these little circles that allow me to round off the corners. If you're using an older version of Illustrator that's absolutely fine. Just go up to effect, down to stylize, round corners, you can specify your corner radius so let's say 20 and then in the appearance palette you'll see round corners listed and you can either delete or click to edit the radius even further. Well, something like that. Either way is absolutely fine. I think for this I'm going to actually try a circle. So let's select our ellipse tool, left click and hold shift to create that perfect circle. I'm going to remove this rounded corners effect in the appearance palette. Now let's make this purple, make this purple, make this circle a different color for now. And with our smart guides turned on, you'll see it snaps nicely to the left and the top edge. And we can hold shift to make sure it stays a perfect circle to drag this out. Now I want to just drag this to the right as well, holding shift. As our text is aligned, 
centrally to this blue box. I want this circle to also be aligned to the blue box. So what we can do now is with the direct selection tool, I can select the blue box, hit delete or backspace, and then with the circle, I can go up to object, arrange, and then use the shortcut keys here to very quickly send this to back and then bring forward one at a time, one step at a time, until it's visible again on top of the background layer. And I'm gonna make this the blue color again. I'm going to make this a global swatch, tick preview, and just make it a little bit brighter. So there we go. I'm also gonna select the whole group now as one, and I'm gonna scale this towards the center by left clicking on this top right anchor point and holding Alt and Shift, it will scale towards the center of the app. Just so there's a bit of space either side of Sunday and then Monday. And then I've still got this over here. I can keep this editable and I can move this all the way off to the side so it's not visible or I can delete it altogether as needed. And then you can adjust these other elements on screen. You can move them around as you like, just experimenting with an alternative design. Let's try something a little different. Let's have, so we'll group the location icon and the place together in object and then select group. We'll move those down there. We'll hold shift to drag our umbrella symbol up. And then we can left click, hold shift, just to move these up together. We'll probably make those a bit bigger as well. So we're holding alt and shift to scale out from the center. And then what I'm going to do is left click and select everything. Go to this little icon here, select align to artboard and then make sure that it is horizontally aligned in the center to the whole artboard. And I'm just gonna drag this one back down. And I think I might just add a divider in between these two here. There's a lot of random shapes. So you've got the degree symbol and you've got this icon and the, the temperature doesn't have an icon. So I think I need something to help these two elements look a little bit more like they belong where they have been positioned, if that makes sense. So I've selected, I've created a horizontal line with the line tool, and I'm just gonna set the stroke color for this as white, and just increase the width to about four. Then using the, the direct selection tool, and I can just left click and hold shift to drag that out. And again, what I can do is select absolutely everything, go up here to align to artboard and then recenter everything. And that will center this divider as well. I just bring that down a little bit to three pixels in width. And maybe make it a bit narrower in width as well. You've got the width up here, so you can specify a specific width like so and then I can just center this element again to the artboard and I'm just gonna left click and hold shift and then just nudge these down so there's a bit more of a gap between the location and the temperature Now I'm going to group these elements together by going to Object and Group. And then I'm going to group all of these elements together as well. And then just go up to Align to Artboard and just check that they are all centered to the center of the design. Now you'll see here Friday has moved out of line somehow. That's fine though. I oh, know Friday's not moved out of line, it's the circle, sorry. So we can just drag that back into place with the direct selection tool. That's absolutely fine. And there we go. We've completed our weather screen user interface design in Adobe Illustrator. 
As always guys, please feel free to leave any questions or comments below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time. Thank you.